Hi everyone, here's the Bookchemist once again, and today I'll spend a few minutes telling you why I think of Full Metal Alchemist, which is a manga series everyone with a vague interest in a good story should read, why I think it is what I like to think of as my favorite story ever. If uh, when I think of my favorite story as in you know, that bizarre alchemical combination of plot, characters, themes, uh, dynamics, structure and everything, without attaching it, by detaching it completely from its medium, which is something you shouldn't do, it's silly and stupid and meaningless and doesn't make sense and you should leave it to the professionals as the fucking book chemist, uh, I'm joking, uh, when I do that bizarre stupid exercise, my favorite story ever, the best story I ever experienced, is very much Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, Against the Day by Thomas Pynchon is probably up there too, but yeah, this comic book is the very best. This is not quite a review because I haven't reread the entire series recently, I just browsed through a few volumes, but every time I browse through these little fuckers I feel like rereading the whole thing, and if you've never experienced Full Metal Alchemist, know that this uh, video is going to be entirely spoiler free, uh, except for the ending, and I'll warn you about that, and also that this series is, uh, it was extremely popular in the notes, which means that on websites such as uh, World of Books, Awesome Books, or their American equivalents, you or wherever you live, you can very much find all the volumes in the series very very cheap second hand. I'll put links in the description box. You have no excuse if you still haven't read Full Metal Alchemist. Why is it so amazing? Beyond things such as the quality of the art, uh, the quality of the layout and things I have no competence whatsoever to speak of. As if I'm competent about the rest. But anyway, why is it so great? The reason, as with all great fiction, at least the great fiction I like, is that it moves within the confines of its specific genre and uh, draws upon its uh, tropes and standards and uh, structures, while at the same time innovating upon them in so many different ways. Uh, let's start from the beginning. One of the great things, possibly the very best thing about Full Metal Alchemist is that it is very much an epic tale, it is an epic story with a great scope and world-changing consequences, and amazing characters who are so unique, but at the same time it is based upon very relatable motives and upon what I would call a very uh, humble uh, aim at the end of the day. This is not a book about people who want to be the world's greatest pirate or who want to defend the weak for reasons. This is a book about people who committed a mistake when they were kids, and if you don't know about this mistake, if you don't know the premise of Full Metal Alchemist, by all means read at least the very first chapters because they are genius. These are young people who fucked up big time and did something they really shouldn't have done, and now they are looking for something very difficult to find, possibly impossible to find, through this epic um, fantasy quest, and when they'll find it, if they manage to find it, what they'll get is a normal life. They won't be rich and famous, they won't have castles, they won't have armies at their disposal, they'll just have their very normal young people's life back. At the end of the day, isn't what we're all trying to, to find? Aren't we all on uh, epic quests? to get a normal life in today's world? I don't know, maybe I'm being too... I, I'm waxing too poetic, but at the same time, this aim makes the characters very relatable. The other great thing about it is that it escapes one of the most common traps of fantasy, especially fantasy, science fiction, adventure fiction in general, but not only, which is the trap of the so-called chosen one syndrome. The fact that many, so many stories, even excellent, amazing stories in these genres, tend to be retellings of the Bible, the New Testament, the story of Jesus. Uh, there's a chosen one who is in some ways a very common figure and person, but at the same time he is so special and he, he does amazing things because he or she, more rarely actually, is the chosen one. Uh, the Harry Potter series is very much the best representation of this thing. And once again, it doesn't mean that stories that follow that structure which is simply a winning structure, it's just so compelling, it doesn't mean that they're bad stories, but still it's a structure that's very difficult to escape and Full Metal Alchemist escapes it beautifully. Edward Elric, the main character, and his brother Alphonse, yeah they're great people, they are the, they're great guys, but they are also in so many ways dicks and arrogant and silly and they do so many messed up things throughout the course of the series, and at the end of the day 
uh, while yeah, they are of course the main characters, uh, one of the reasons why that, 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 that syndrome, that chosen one syndrome is so inescapable is that because of the very way fiction works, because of the fact that you are going to focus on the lives of these characters, their lives are going to be extraordinary, otherwise you wouldn't have a, a good story. And that already makes them chosen ones, if you get my meaning, because the narrator chose to talk about them. At the same time, Full Metal Alchemist manages to escape that. And it is very much the plot of this comic book, the plot of this manga is very much choral. All the characters contribute at the end of the day toward completion of this quest and it's not like uh, supporting characters, secondary characters are just magical helpers that uh, get, uh, you know, get the, their five minutes of screen time and solve a situation and then disappear. Far from it. Yet another great thing about Full Metal Alchemist is the fact that it never body shames and nev and fo focuses extensively on what are actually disabled characters. The main character in this manga um, uh, is missing an arm and a leg. There's people in here who are missing both legs, there's people in here with extensive scars, and some people will approach this from a different perspective, and they will argue that this series doesn't quite represent disability because while these people have these disabilities, they are still somehow kick-ass war machines. Uh, and I understand that position, I think it's a completely legit one. Uh, at the same time, I do think that, yeah, there's an element of wish fulfillment in here, but it's still extremely refreshing having these characters so often, even in progressive, intelligent fiction, you inevitably find uh, uh, bad guys, villains, who are simply ugly or deformed or scarred. There's still that association of disabilities and deformities with evil instin instinctively. Uh, and at the same time, I would, I would also argue that several times in the course of the manga, these uh, metal arms or legs fail the characters and they go back to being simply disabled people having trouble navigating life. And that's amazing to read about. It's equally amazing as all the awesome fights with magic and alchemy and uh, bizarre science stuff. Full Metal Alchemist also strikes... I'm going to reread this thing, it's just too good. Full Metal, uh, Metal Alchemist also strikes a perfect balance uh, when it comes to representing war. Uh, war um, in, in the comic book plays a major role, especially in the second half of the series. And it plays, the series plays with a paradox of war uh, that is expressed by a character in another comic book series I quite like which is Saga by Brian Vaughan and Fiona Staples, uh, which is the fact that um, war and violence in general is pretty much the worst thing in the world. It's really the most horrific, hellish thing ever, except when it's fictional. Fictional violence is actually quite cool, and I actually agree a lot, and I think everyone who is a fan of metal music, or uh, most video games, or hip-hop, or Shakespeare will agree with that. Fictional violence is actually a lot of fun. And Full Metal Alchemist features so many fights and so much uh, fictional violence. It's a shonen manga, I think. It's a manga for uh, adol adolescent boys, and in so many ways it follows in the structure of this genre. Even though I will argue that it is very very different, has a very different narrative structure from those very popular shonens uh, that are just fights upon fights with characters getting better and fighting uh, tougher opponents. Stuff such as Dragon Ball, Fairy Tail, uh, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, which I also liked a lot as a kid. Uh, and I can all still have great fun with them, don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing that genre in favor of this stuff, but still, it's not quite that um, that confined in the structures of in in the um, in the restrictions of that specific narrative structure. What I was going to say is that while it is still a shonen manga with lots of fictional violence, it still manages to draw and to draw a picture of war as hellish and conveys a beautiful, amazing, truthful picture of the way war. Uh, changes terribly. The people who fight it, the people who are directly influenced by it, and the people who will have to grow in the aftermath of it. The noxious, the toxic effects of war and violence on nations, on individuals. I think you will have to read it or experience it by yourself to appreciate this ambiguity, because the way I'm telling it makes it sound like Full Metal Alchemist is somewhat moralizing, that it tries to have its cake and eat it. Uh, but really, I, I could compare it to stuff such as some movies by the studio Ghibli, 
um, uh, Porco Rosso, uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, some of my very favorite animated movies, which are which feature um, fighter planes fighting each other in the sky, uh, spaceships exploding, uh, fights between uh, mechanical stuff and giant monsters, but at the same time are deeply pacifist reflections on the nature of war. Finally, the cherry on this luscious cake and it's a huge cherry is the series ending and I'm going to spoil it, I'm going to talk about the ending so if you haven't read Full Metal Alchemist or you haven't finished it by all means stop the video now, go away, forget about me forever if you're still here and going, yeah, now I'm going to spoil it the, the ending of Full Metal Alchemist is simply brilliant and I know it is brilliant because it's so terribly painful the, that idea at the end of the day that uh, Elric cannot do alchemy anymore, cannot perform tricks anymore, it's just heart shattering. Uh, imagine what you what you think of as your vocation. You know, maybe you want to be a writer, maybe you want to be a YouTuber, maybe you want to be a baker, uh, you want to have your own bakery. Now imagine that never again in your life you can ever write a single line of fiction, or you can never film a video anymore, or you can never bake a cake anymore. That's crushing! And yet, at the end of the day, you still have your life, you still have your friends, you still have your family, your dear ones. And that's what Full Metal Alchemist, at the end of the day, tries to convey. Um, you, the, the series never forgets, eventually, that these are still characters, the Elric brothers, who, at the beginning of the series, have tried to do something really stupid that they shouldn't have done, have tried to do something that people in general shouldn't attempt. Of course, you can read the whole, uh, you know, trying to resurrect your mother thing as a metaphor for uh, scientific experimentation or for exploitation of human means beyond what should be humans, uh, the reach of human um, humans as a race. At the end of the day, though, yeah, they did something they shouldn't have done, and you can empathize with them and sympathize with them because they were kids, they didn't know better, and that's great. At the end of the day, they still did something silly, and the way the narrative makes them pay, in particular it makes Edward pay, is genius. Because it's painful, it's difficult to accept, but at the end of the day it also feels somewhat right. Had Edward died at the end of Full Metal Alchemist, Edward or Alphonse or other major characters, that would have made martyrs of them, and that would have undermined the whole uh, meaning, the whole moral, the whole sense of the narrative. Uh, think of it as I could draw parallels with Breaking Bad, but I would spoil the series, so I won't. I can make a parallel with Macbeth by Shakespeare. Macbeth too to talks about somebody, the main character, who does horrific shit, and he's a disgusting people and a dictator, and he's horrible. And yet, because of those uh, mon monologues at the end, because of the way he dies, there's a tendency toward the end to turn them into a sort of dark hero and to make an idol and martyr of the character. Full Metal Alchemist instead never forgets that the characters are people who did something wrong, and eventually they pay for it in a beautiful and right way. I hope I managed to convey why I think the ending is so genius. If you have a different opinion, if you didn't like the ending, or if you're not sure, let me know in the comments. I'd love to discuss this with fellow um, Full Metal Alchemist fans. And if you still haven't read the series, you shouldn't have watched the video this far because I spoiled you the ending. Uh, I don't envy you. Let me know what you think about the series, about uh, other mangas I, or stuff I mentioned, Saga, uh, Ghibli Studios, such, uh, such things, in the comments below. In a second I'll put links on the screen to my review of Death Note, which is a manga series I read for the first time recently and reviewed, and to Against the Day. Against the Day is an awesome uh, book you should read, <laughs> another amazing story, epic quest with so many characters and such unconventional narrative structures. Uh, the video is ancient so it probably sucks, but who cares? And thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.